What's going on, you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi, and today I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, with my friend Jeremy Alexander Newsom, and he's the CEO of Real Life Trading. So the reason I'm here, and this is going to piggyback off a video I did earlier about passive income, but Jeremy talks about making the shift between being a consumer and an investor. And I want to bring the information uh, to artists that we consume products, we consume software, we consume software like Autodesk, Maya. A lot of us use Adobe Photoshop, and also we have a passion for video games. So not only do we make the art, but a lot of us actually enjoy playing them. So Jeremy, I'm going to ask him some questions, and hopefully we can change our mindset between being a consumer and actually being an investor. And I think that's important for artists to actually know and be able to uh, open another source of income. So appreciate you bringing this information to my subscribers. So let's start off with um, basically what's this whole idea of the, pretty much what I talked about of being a um, investor versus a consumer. Yeah, and I, I appreciate you asking. I appreciate you being here in Nashville, Tennessee and making a special thing happened just for your subscribers. So guys, he's putting a lot of work and a lot of time into this. And uh, so he's just saying thank you for trying to help and educate so many people about this concept. The concept is not new by any stretch of the imagination. I just happen to be the best looking person to ever talk about it. Uh, it's just specifically being a consumer rather than just uh, you know being an investor or a consumer. The consumer standpoint is it really fell into my hands when we talked about Apple. And a lot of people use Apple products. Do you have an iPhone? I'm an Android guy, sorry. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. But there's a lot of people who have, you know, Apple iPhone or iWatch or iPad or Apple TV, some kind of Apple product. But if in, when the first iPod was released, did you buy an iPod? Yes. Okay. So when the first iPod was released, we were discussing the overall value of around $600 at the time. Pretty brand new. But if you took that exact same amount of money, and bought shares of Apple, that $600 investment presently would be worth somewhere around $3,200. So that same amount of money that you would have bought that product with, if you would have taken that and invested it into the stock, you'd have 500% you know, more money. And then just imagine all the other products that you could do that with. And your goal as people is to get paid to be a part of that company to be in that ecosystem yeah that's exactly right so let's dive into some companies that directly correlate with what my audiences actually consume right sure. what i teach in my channel is a package called autodesk maya yep. so a lot of us uh, use that package and then as artists as graphic designers or even as 3d artists we also use adobe photoshop right sure. and um it's kind of funny because Look at it from an artist standpoint, when Adobe or Autodesk switched the licensing into incurring revenue, aka monthly payments versus a one-time fee, yes. a lot of artists were yeah. upset about it, right? Sure. And it's one of those things that, you know, artists a lot of times feel jaded by the business moves or they feel like they get the, uh, I guess, short end of the stick. But if you flip your mindset, you could actually profit from that as well, right? Totally agree. And then also uh, companies like Activision and EA, because my channel, uh, a lot of us make game art. It's kind of pretty much the software and the process of making game art. Mm. But we're also passionate about video games. Sure. So I want you to dive in. Maybe we could start out with Autodesk, kind of see you know where maybe uh, some of my subscribers could actually just flip their mindset and instead of just paying Autodesk to use that product, they could actually invest and have Autodesk pay them. Totally, and I love that you bring that up. And again, just as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are watching this, you don't have to have a massive amount of money to do this, right? You can start small, but in order to be great, you do have to start. That's just the way it works. So let's dive into Autodesk. I'm gonna have a screen share, we're gonna pop into the screen, and we're just gonna pull up a weekly chart on this. And again, just kind of talk through some really, really basic specifics. The two lines that you see on my screen is the 100 simple moving average and the 200 simple moving average. You have a blue line and you have a red line. 100 is blue, 200 is red. And realistically, JL, all it is is it takes the last 100 weeks, adds them all together and divides by 100 and you come up with a specific price. 
So Autodesk in 2016 was $47 a share. So that means if you have $47 in your pocket, you could buy one share of Autodesk. And that's 2016, February. So we're talking presently, this is mid-2019. That's two and a half years ago. Guess what Autodesk is at right now? Uh, off the top of my head, without looking over there, probably around two and change, mid 200s. Close. Okay, so it did. It got up to 170 at one point, but right now it's at 150. Okay. I, well, I mean, that's huge, bit. right? That's huge. So if you're investing in Autodesk at 40, let's just say $50 a share for even math. Okay, now you're at 150. That's a solid, strong 3x. And that entire time, I mean, it hit $50 numerous times as it's trading sideways, but let's say you go all back to 2011, right? 2011, you're talking about $28, $29 and some change. So once a month, if you are an artist or someone who uses this particular product, you could just, instead of maybe going out and buying that bottle of tequila to celebrate your big launch or your big you know, design, you could instead take that exact same $47 and buy one share. So if you can accumulate those shares, wealth comes from accumulation over time of something. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be shares, it could be houses, it could be nice watches, it could be nice you know, classic cars, it could be something that you're collecting, but you're, you have to have a lot of something to be wealthy. Now that makes total, total sense. Now, so where would be a point, and definitely we're gonna probably dive into the technicals a little bit more, but where would be a point that would make sense because obviously stocks fluctuate up and down. So if you're looking to make that shift uh, of a consumer into an investor, where would you actually look to get in and start building these positions that you say over time can become uh, can accrue uh, wealth? That's a great question. Have you ever heard of the app called Robinhood? Yes. Okay. So Robinhood's a free app that pretty much anyone can access right now. And you have the ability to log in, create an account, link it to your bank account, and transfer money for free from your bank account to the app. And the great part is with the application, you can buy stocks for free. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't cost you anything in commission. So what once would cost you $8 to buy one share of something. So if that costs $50 to buy a share, it really costs $58 to buy one share. Now it's free. So all that overhead is totally wiped clean. So you can go into Robinhood and you can actually buy a stock directly from there, even if it's one share per month. And then as far as the actual location, the cool part is I would suggest most people who are doing this go and use a free charting software. The charting software that's uh, right here on the screen that you guys can see through the screen capture is called TradingView, T-R-A-D-I-N-G-V-I-E-W. There's another one called Trend Spider. Both of those can be accessed for free. You can get them on your phone with an application and you're gonna go to a weekly chart. So you start off by going over here and just typing in, you know, for example, Autodesk. If you don't know what it is, just type in A-U-T-O-D-E-S-K and there it is, Autodesk, you click on it. Uh, go to a weekly chart and just start pulling up some what I refer to as moving averages and, and use those moving averages to have a, just a general idea of are you buying high or are you buying low? Because like you mentioned, stocks do fluctuate and you want to buy at a lower price and continue to accumulate over time. So I teach this strategy to kids, man. Every single March, I go to middle schools and high schools and I call buying off the blue line. Hmm. So I just tell them to pull up a weekly chart, 100 simple moving average, and if you're accumulating positions, just buy it there. Now it makes total, total sense. So let's move on to the next ticker and then I'll follow up with some questions. Okay. So let's go ahead and make the shift over to Adobe, which is a very uh, popular application, which they have a lot of different artists use it from uh, Adobe Premiere to make videos. Uh, Adobe Illustrator for making illustrations, mm -hmm. and a lot of graphic designers mm -hmm. use it uh, use Photoshop as well, right? Pop that chart up and yep. maybe just look at overall entries and maybe a good position, uh, just how the stock has been performing, and maybe a good place to maybe pick up a couple shares. Yeah, this this stock is what I would refer to as Sea Biscuit. It's been running. Uh, Adobe when they switched from you're mentioning the like buy the whole package to a monthly subscription. That changed the game for them because you have monthly reoccurring revenue and you all are brilliantly smart people. You know how reoccurring revenue works. So Adobe, as far as a, I mean, a stock price, 
in 2016 was at 76 and it hit 300 a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, even a bigger move than Autodesk. And that is something that a product that a lot of uh, not only video game designers, but just designers in general will be using a lot of Adobe. So for video, for editing, for creation, for music, Adobe can do a lot. So for right now, as far as purchasing, my overall thought process is Adobe is presently trading at $287 a share. This stock does pay dividends, right? Which means that the company will actually pay you a small, small percentage every single year to just be a shareholder. So Adobe, I think, pays somewhere in the range of like 1.3%. So again, not a lot of money. If you have $100,000 invested, you get a free 1,300 bucks a year just given to you, saying, hey, thanks a lot. And it just goes into your account. You can recycle that over and over. No, that, that actually makes perfect sense. And I like what you said about reoccurring revenue. I had a video about passive income, so I've done it. I believe in the power. You actually run a business here, Real Life Trading, yeah. right? Yeah. And you do have a source of reoccurring revenue yep. with your digital products. So can you tell the audiences a little bit more about your business and how you generate reoccurring revenue and your overall thoughts about it? Sure. Um, I mean, I appreciate the opportunity to plug my company, <laughs> but uh, I created a company not too long ago, uh, over five years ago, called Real Life Trading, and our mission is to enrich lives. And we do that just by simply educating and instructing people from all around the world about how the stock market works. Uh, I've loved the stock market and been fascinated by it ever since I was a young child, and I also have a passion for teaching, so I really like to just give people some insightful and helpful information. And uh, very similar to a lot of other reoccurring revenue models, um, the way at work right now is I will have customers pay a certain amount of money to attend webinars that I host online. I'll be doing one in about an hour and 15 minutes from right now. And I will go through some stock picks, just kind of like we're doing right now, is I will go through and look at some very specific trade setups and I will get paid a monthly portion to do that. And uh, Really, that's using your skills and marketing your skills to a large audience of people so that you can help a lot of people at one particular time. Now, that's that's great. And I really like what you do in this company and just your overall mission. And I wanted to touch on something that you mentioned earlier, which was this is one of the misconceptions about people that are uneducated about the stock market mm. is that you need a very large account, mm. right? Yeah. And a lot of us artists, we know that art, there's not a huge uh, money, especially when you first get started, sure. when you first are looking for clients or looking to get in the studio, or just getting that traction. So what advice do you have for a uh, beginner investor that maybe has a small account to actually get started? And the second question, is the fear of losing money because mm. that stopped a lot of people and it actually stopped me from uh, going into a lot of these great companies that we talked about um, because, and you know, it's just kind of that fear of losing money but you end up missing out on a lot of good uh, potential investments. Yep, two great questions. I'll attack the first one, the question of how to get started. Get started. That's usually how you get started actually and the way to do that is kind of go through the Robinhood approach where you buy and accumulate these shares for free. Just buy one. Just find one company that you like, that you use a lot, and just buy one share. And then just see what it does. Because I promise you, if you're listening out there, you're probably going to like pull up your phone, check it a little bit. Oh, wow, I'm up $4 today. That's cool. And then you can sell it, you know, make 4 bucks. Buy it again a week later, sell it again for four more bucks, and you do that three or four times, you're hooked. So that's how you're going to get started. Uh, regarding the fear of losing money, it's a very valid fear. A lot of people are you know, afraid of Enron. Yeah. Right, I'm buying a company and you know, they go bankrupt and I lose all my money. That's a valid fear to have, but it's rare. That's the other thing is Enron was, I mean, out of the amount of companies that exist in the stock market, we're talking 0.1%. 0.01% of them will do what Enron did. So very, very minute uh, thing. However, as an artist and as people who use these products, you know if it starts turning to absolute, absolute dog crap, right? You're going to know pretty quickly if you hate it. So you'll be one of the first people to know, you know what, I don't like this product anymore. They made these changes, they made these things, they made these shifts that I really don't like. I'm out of 5,000. And you just can sell your position quicker. So if it, uh, let's say Activision comes out with just some absolute horrible games, for four years in a row and no one's playing them and no one likes them and you're like, you know what? 
I'm up 12% over the last four years, not a big return, I'm just gonna get out because I don't believe in the company anymore. So as far as losing money, it can happen, but through a longer term of investing horizon, it's a little bit harder if you just simply buy and you're patient on good companies that you know intimately. Now that's that's a great answer. So you mentioned Activision. So why don't we pull up the chart sure. and just get an overall rundown of your thoughts as far as the company and possible entry points as an investor. I will do that. I love Activision and uh, the guy operating that camera back there, he's beautiful, his name is Aaron Tomberlin. He is a big Activision fan as well. And Activision, uh, what, what companies, do, what games do they make that you like? Or that you know of or you're familiar with? Well, Activision does own uh, Blizzard Entertainment. So uh, a lot of people, including myself, like World of Warcraft. You're um, a wower. Huh? I, I've, I've wowed before. <laughs> cool. Um, also, there is uh, Call of Duty, which okay. is made by Activision. So that's okay. a first-person shooter. Sure. Um, so a lot of great titles. And they also own King, which is their mobile division, which mm. they came out with Candy Crush. Mm. Mm. And I they acquired that. that. So they're pretty much three huge entities yeah. in one. Yeah, I, I, I dropped the bag big on Activision just because I... I'm dumb, uh, and I didn't consider myself as a, you know a video gamer at the time. But in 2011, Activision was trading around $11 a share. So Activision goes from $11 a share to 80. <laughs> now, for those of you who are following this YouTube channel, watching this video, that's a gain. Okay, you're you're increasing your investment if you buy at 11 and it's a, it's at 80. Capital G gain. <laughs> yeah, for That's sure. That's a big gain. That's a big gain. So if we're looking at the chart right now, what's very interesting about it, in my opinion, is I'll throw up um, a quick percentage drop just from let's say the most recent high to a recent low. Activision's it's trading at about a 50% discount, or it was just weeks ago. And I know you're a big fan of Activision. We've been talking about Activision and you've done some strategies on Activision that are also bullish. And that's another thing, ladies and gentlemen, is this guy talks the talk and walks the walk. He's not only asking these questions, but he's also an investor. And he's really investing his time into you beautiful people as well. So keep that in mind because this guy cares. So Activision pulling back 50%. So let's say you want to get a Bentley and that Bentley costs you $200,000. Same exact Bentley, three months later, costs 100,000. It's a little bit more appealing now. That's what's happening with Activision. You could buy a Bentley if you make enough money on Activision, okay? It's 50% off over the last few weeks. Now, at this exact moment in time, it's 35% uh, cheaper than it was because it's increased 15% in the last few weeks. So if you're looking at playing Activision, just based on this particular chart, this is again a weekly chart, and I'm gonna call this strategy buy off of the red line, which is the 200 simple moving average. So if you're looking at playing it, you could start accumulating some shares around 52, um, down to about 48. The low should be in. Uh, this low came in around February 11th, 2019. That should be the lowest that Activision goes for a while. Uh, I'm not saying it can't go any lower, but if it does, start doing some research. Start looking at some companies, start reaching out to professionals like myself and just asking them their opinion. But overall, from here, I would start accumulating Activision aggressively uh, up until it makes its way up into 90 again, which would probably be in, uh, so I'll turn this drawing back on. This is a drawing of what I think Activision is most likely going to do. This pink line is kind of like a future forecast based on my historical predictions of charts. There you go. And so I'm thinking in 2022, at the latest, this thing's going to be over $85 a share again. And that pink line, ladies and gentlemen, is AKA Mr. Squiggles. Write it down. <laughs> That's right. So let's make the pivot. We're in the video game industry. So let's shift over and look at EA. And also, I want to get your thoughts on the whole competitive gaming industry because mm. that was a big catalyst mm. to the uh, basically the, the uprise in the stock movement for a lot of these uh, companies. Yeah. And it's going to be a shift that they predict is going to pretty much outpace most professional sports as far as viewership, and I believe it's actually starting to do so already yeah. at this current time. So let's get your thoughts on EA and also the uh, competitive gaming landscape. Mm. Let's start with the competitive gaming landscape first. I agree with you. The amount of people who are, number one, able to watch e-games and sporting is just greater. There's more people who are able to do it because they have immediate access to it. Number two, there are so many people uh, that are able, that have access to these games that can start playing them right from their phone. 
So for example, me and you can't just go play football right now, but we could pull up our phone and I could crush you in some <laughs> clash of clans or something else, right? So we have access immediately to any of these games that we want to create and that we want to you know, interact with, on e with each other. So EA Games is a, a massive component of that. If we're just talking about e-gaming and the industry, video games aren't going anywhere. And children, that's all they want to do these days. And I'm not saying that as like a grandpa -ish, that's dumb. I'm saying, awesome. That's where we're at, right? People under the age of 25 just love video games. And that's great. So that's going to be the future. As they grow up, as they get more disposable income, they're going to put even more money into video games. And they're going to put more money into the research and the technology that goes into it. And they're going to have, you know, these vests that you wear, right, that make the bullet feel more real and it's going to really immerse you into the game and you're going to have all these different senses that are just fully in the, like you're going to be running on the treadmills and you're just in it to win it kind of thing so for as far as the chart this is the biggest one that's had the most explosions from the one that we've been discussing and uh ea was 12 dollars in 2012 12 bucks and now anyone who's watching this has 12 bucks all right then it went to 140 a few weeks ago. Weeks ago. Capital G. <laughs> Massive gain again. Now, again, I did not participate in that particular run, uh, but there's many, many places that one could have you know, made some money on EA. And again, talking about buying at the red line, that's going to be a strategy that I would implement again on this one. $96.93 and below is going to be the price that you're going to want to start accumulating EA games. So go through and look at how much money you've spent on video games in the last year. Take that exact same amount of money and budget it and take that amount of money and put it into one of these four that we've talked about. Or specifically EA and Electronic Arts. You take that, let's say it's $1,500. You take 1500 bucks, you put it into Electronic Arts, and let's say between now and you know July 2021, EA goes from 96 to 120, worst case scenario. So you make, let's say, $20 a share. Well, that's going to be a nice, hefty 20% discount for any future games that you buy in 2021. You can, you can, if you want, sell that share. You have more money, you take that money, you can go buy your games with it, and that company paid you to buy some games or gave you a discount. That's the way I like to think about this type of approach. I don't suggest you necessarily pull out that money. I think it'd be better off to stay in there and just continue to buy more and more and more over time, especially if people like you and myself really like these companies long term. I love how you worded that. And one of my, my intent with this interview, a lot of times as artists, you know, we we're passionate about things and that could lead to a little bit of exploitation and, you know, us underselling ourselves. Mm. And I always talk about, you know, think like a business, you know, create as an artist, but like think and brand yourself as a business. Right. And I wanted to basically um, give or make be able to make that connection between products that my audience uses and, you know, possible things that could invest. And sometimes it takes the right message to cut through the clutter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, this reminds me of marketing work where, you know, I used to go to marketing conferences and they would use these big words and all these uh, marketing terms. And it was hard for me to actually implement it uh, into my own realm because I was an artist. And, you know, those connections came through a lot of work that I did on my own. And this was kind of the hope of the interview to be able to make that connection and now you could shift your mindset about, you know, being a investor versus a consumer. So if I sparked your imagination or your intrigue about investing in the stock market, and hopefully I did through this interview, how can my subscribers actually find out more information about you? Or you have a lot of great content, so what's a good place to start with real life trading and just consuming your knowledge? Well, I appreciate that, man, and thanks for asking. I also have a YouTube channel. <laughs> So since you're here and you're watching this most likely on YouTube or JL's websites, many of his websites, just go to YouTube and type in real life trading and click that search button and then click that red subscribe button, click the little jingle bell thing and uh, go to playlists. And I have a lot of playlists that are created and instructed just for specific types of traders. Most of you out there potentially might be beginners, which it might be the first time you've thought about it or considered it. So click the beginners playlist and just start going through some videos 
and letting your imagination run wild to the things that you can achieve through investing because anyone who is a billionaire for sure knows about the stock market, but anyone who's a multimillionaire, the chances are large that they have some investment in equities because they move, they're amazing, and they make you money while you sleep. And that is how you get wealthy. So what I'll do is just as ease for finding your channel and really all the links that you talked about from Robinhood to Trendspotter, I'll go ahead and drop them down in okay. the description down below and also try to throw some of them on a YouTube card. Okay. So I really, really appreciate uh, your time Likewise. and expertise and really just enriching. This is what this guy does for a living is enrich lives. And he's a truly, truly genuine, uh, you know, human being, really cares about people. And I'm kind of the same way and I'm doing it for my guys, my artists that are really just in a place a lot of times where they're tremendously talented, but uh, income can be hard, especially when you begin. So we kind of have similar visions, different uh, realms, right? But we have a lot of overlaps too. Yeah. And it was really just nice just getting your insight. And I really appreciate it. Oh man, my pleasure. Make sure you uh, link the, our two videos we've done in the past together where we, uh, it was all his creative ideas where he wanted to do a stock market joke battle. He'll put those videos in the link below because... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've, uh, you've been taking some L's on those... Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I lost, but I lost with honor. I lost, I lost on my shield. So, and this is something I do with my YouTube channels. I incorporate comedy and, and this kind of stems into other things that I'm interested, which is, you know, stock markets and investing. So I try to put humor and just, you know, just like you, you try to make people laugh, uh, make people laugh and enrich their lives. Well, thanks, man. This All right, really, brother. This is a wonderful interview. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys got a lot of information from this guy. He truly does care. So hit that subscribe button if you hadn't already. Be a part of his YouTube channel. Be a part of his community. And let's grow together.